Okay, uh, oh, um, all right, let's go to the chapter now. Uh, chapter 6, God promises a Savior. So God wants to save us, deliver us from something, all right? So the sa Savior is one who saves, all right, from something evil, bad, all right? So when God promises, he says he's going to do something, he's going to send one who's going to save us. So here in the Bible, Psalm 51, have mercy on me, O God. So have mercy on me. So mercy is connected with we've done we've done bad things. We've sinned. Uh, we're we're unhappy because of sin. And we ask God to have mercy on us, relieve us, take away our sin, restore us, kind of make us whole again, heal us, heal us spiritually. So mercy very much is connected with that kind of uh, healing, uh, heal heal our souls. God, dear God, thank you for allowing us to know you and love you. Please help us to trust you and to make the right choice to show our love for you. Make us to know, help us to know that you still love us, even when we have made bad choices. Amen. So important in our prayer here that God still loves us, even when we, we turn away from him, when we make bad choices. He's still love. God, he is love. We learned that right away. God is love. He's like, like the sun is always shining. All right. You might say, well, sometimes it's not the sun isn't shining outside. Well, that's because something's in the way, all right? But the sun, that's that's what it does. It just shines, all right? Sometimes it clouds are in the way or something else, like a building or whatever, kind of uh, is in the way, so we can't see the sun, uh, sunlight and such. Uh, but it's the sun is still shining, right? <laughs> Saying God is always loving. He's loving you intensely, all right? But, you know, we can hide, like Adam and Eve, we heard in the Bible earlier this year, they, they hid. They wanted to hide from God's, essentially, light of love. Uh, and so that's when we make bad choices, we're kind of hiding from God's love, even though God's still loving us. All right, he's shining down on us. We can try to cover ourselves and want to block that love. But God is always loving us. And we have a choice if we want to receive that love and, and let him kind of work on our hearts so we can love in return. So good news is God promises to send us a Savior, all right? So he promises to save us, all right? He doesn't just leave us in our sin. We make bad choices. He doesn't say, well, too bad. Adios. I'm giving up on you. No. Nope. He wants to draw us back. He wants to deliver us, uh, heal us. If we make bad choices, it hurts our relationship with God and others. Right? So it's hurting. So when we make bad choices, when we sin, when we choose to do something wrong, uh, we're harming relationships. And we don't want to, we want to protect, we want to build up relationships. That's what we're made for. That's where our happiness is going to be. It, that's where happiness is found. Even here on earth where we can be happy, most fully alive in relationships. It's not just having, well, have a bunch of toys or I can do this or that, but it's sharing my life with other persons. You know, it's always more enjoyable going somewhere with other people than alone. All right. So it's, um, it's like go, when I go out, if I ever go out to eat, it's like, I don't just go out to eat on my own. I'm like, I want to be with other people. Like, I want to share a meal with others. All right. That's that's part of kind of the shared life. Our jo our happiness in part is, is really connected with sharing our life with others. Learn about God's word. Adam and Eve chose not to trust God and disobeyed him. They had to leave the garden because... And they became sad. So we heard this earlier this year, one of the Bible readings. God told me, all the fruit of the trees, except this one tree. The tree, so this tree right here, you can really see it on here. The uh, tree of knowledge of good and evil. They weren't to eat that fruit. All the other trees. There's even another tree in the middle of the garden, probably this one over here. The tree of life. That would give them kind of sharing God's divine life. All right. Which uh, in our Bible, read, they didn't mention there's so much details that not in uh, in children's Bibles, they don't always mention all the details. Um, but there's this tree where God was going to you know, give them a sharing of his divine life. But they eat from the one tree God tells them not to eat. They disobey him. And then they cover themselves. They hide themselves. And God has to say, you have to leave the garden, which really it's pointing to you've broken friendship. Uh, your life is going to be difficult now. You've, you've damaged that relationship we've had. So sin, heart, sin, sin doesn't... Uh, Sin hurts us uh, as it hurts others. It also hurts ourselves. Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the first sin. Their friendship with God and each other was broken. Right? So that's what 
sin does, all right, sin, bad, which is another word, name for bad choices, they harm relationships. Sometimes even break them. Adam and Eve were happy in the garden. Find and circle the snake who tempted them in to sin. And then color the picture. Right, so it says circle the snake. Why don't you color uh, color the snake? Well, let's pick a color. Um, what's a uh, brown? All right, brown. Color well, not brown because it's on a tree. How about orange? Like an orange. Okay, color it orange. All right, instead of circling it because you're going to color the whole thing. And then you circle it and you find the snake, color him orange, and then color the rest of the um, tr the rest of the picture. And I need you to pause the video right now. Go ahead uh, and. Color that we'll sh share our our pictures um, when we zoom. Adam and Eve disobeyed God. They were sad, all right, because they broke friendship with Him. God gave them some very good news. He promised to send a Savior. He said that one one of Eve's descendants. Uh, one of her children's 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 children, uh, way down there, is going to crush the head of the serpent, crush Satan, defeat him. All right? And that's referring to oh, Jesus. All right? God, the Son who becomes man for us. So Jesus is our Savior. Here's him welcoming the children. He lets the children come to him. This passage in Scripture, it says, people were bringing children to Jesus. People. Who are these people bringing children? Probably parents, right? Mom and moms and dads, right? Bring their children, right? See, here's a mom probably bring her bringing her child over here. It wasn't just like random people bringing children to Jesus. Probably their parents, all right? And your when your mom and dad brought you to back to, to church to be baptized, that's what you were they were doing. They were doing they were bringing you to Jesus, so that Jesus could embrace you and fill you with His life, His grace. We'll learn more about that later. Um, but we see here in this picture that Jesus in, invites them. Uh, and he, he lets them embrace him, and actually he hugs, it said in the gospel, that he embraces them, uh, blesses them, uh, touches them, he kind of affirms them, he shows them how much God loves, and he loves them, and allows them just to be with him. So when you're in church, one beautiful thing is you're, when you're in church, uh, and there's the blessed sacrament, we'll learn tomorrow, but there's that, at church you may see like there's this bread, uh, what's this bread that the priest holds up? And what's that all about? When he holds, the priest holds it up. It's become Jesus. All right, you're in Jesus' presence. And even before you get, when you stop in a church, Jesus is present in that special box, the tabernacle. All right, so people, you come in, you genuflect. Why? Because we go down on one knee because Jesus is really present. So when you're in church, Jesus is very close. And so you, you could be in Jesus' presence. All right. He just wants to love you in a special way when you're in church. Jesus forgives. It is good for us to be sorry when we make a bad choice and to forgive others who have hurt us. Jesus can help us when it is hard, and he will always forgive us if we are sorry. So it's very good here. It's when we make bad choices. Not mis Mere mistakes are, you know, okay, we, we make a mistake. But some, a bad choice is something we choose. A mistake is something by accident. Um, so it's very important, you know, you know, I just made a mistake. Well, I said those words by mistake. Well, did you say them by mistake? Or did you say them because you wanted to be mean to so-and-so? Uh, uh, it was, so we want to be careful, you know, it's, I, like, I like the language here of kind of referring to sins as bad choices. We choose to sin. It's not an accident. It's not an accident. All right. Um, accidents uh, are different than bad choices. Okay. God promised to send a Savior. Connect the dots and trace the letters to see who God sent to save us. So one starting here, and then we're going to work, work around and get back to, third, to this is 1 and 13. So here's 2. You guys can continue. Uh, and you can trace the name over here. All right, the letters there. You can pause it if you need to. And we'll see what we, we all come up with. Uh, this says Jesus, actually. So we'll see what the, what what um, when we zoom what, what comes out what, what you connect the dots all right so you need to pause the video uh, go ahead you might maybe you've just finished already <laughs> I'm sure some of you were very quick got got to it right away as we turn the page um, so you want know we'll share when we zoom 
Good choices make us happy. Bad choices make us sad. It's very important. We want to make good choices. Why? Because I want to be, ha- I want to be happy. Uh, as my, one of my sister says, I want to be happy. I don't want to be sad. I want to be happy. We make good choices. Bad choices make us sad. Good choices make us happy and lead us to deeper happiness. So here is Eve. Eve was sorry for disobeying God. Jesus, our Savior, is our Savior who teaches us to help us to be good and holy. So Adam and Eve, remember, they disobeyed God. They were sorry later on, all right? But they didn't get to go back in the garden as itself, all right? But they, God, was, you know, um, but she, they were sorry. Tradition, Our tradition holds, Catholic tradition, Malti holds that they're sorry. And actually some pictures uh, of the, of Jesus rising from the dead, we'll learn about actually show at him pulling Adam and Eve up out of the grave, all right? Kind of, uh, so just strong tradition that Adam and Eve uh, kind of, uh, and even early, early homilies and stuff in the church sermons uh, of God saying God, when he, Jesus died and rose, he, he went to find Adam and Eve, all right, to bring them back to life, to bring it so they can be in heaven with him forever. All right, here's this toy thing. Uh, you know the drill, go online if you can, and if you want to read that story. Um, everything in the Garden of Eden was perfect before Adam and Eve, the fall of Adam and Eve. They lived in intimate, close relationship with God in harmony with themselves and with God and with creation. So we, hear, we saw Adam, the, the devil tempted Adam and Eve. They disobeyed. And then we call that the fall. All right, the fall. They, they fell from friendship with God. They broke friendship. They fell from grace. So we call that the fall. All right, it was a pretty big fall. Not, not a physical fall, but a spiritual fall. They were in friendship with God, and then they decide, well, we're going to jump off this spiritual cliff. All right. Oh, why did you do that? But then God sent one is it promises to send a savior that's to draw Adam and Eve back to himself and all of us. And that's why he sends Jesus to repair the damage. And God wants to forgive us. So when we do something wrong, we turn to we say to others, we're sorry. And we also ask God, I'm sorry for harming you. Because whenever whenever we make a bad choice, we're also harming our relationship with God. Because God has given us or so we're misusing uh, the bodies and souls that God has given us. We're misusing the gift of ourselves. Uh, and so but we, whenever we turn to God, we ask God, ask for forgiveness, and we're truly sorry. We're saying, I really mean it, and I want to do better. God forgives us. God is merciful. He wants to restore us so that we can grow in friendship and happiness with him. All right, our Bible story today is the uh, with Joshua, all right. So here is um, Joshua. Is after Moses came Joshua, and he leads the people, God's people, into what's called the Promised Land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, does it really flowing with milk and honey? Well, not. It was like rivers of milk and honey dripping from. The, well, no, but it was a. It was a very good land. All right, very. There was a lot of good, um, good, good soil. It provided a. Lot. So it wasn't like the, the desert wilderness they were in, all right? It's just kind of... Uh, um, so Mose, uh, at, Joshua brings them in, and here's the Ark of the Covenant. So God's special place remained with them, and this idea of God is with them, all right? Actually, on the top here, it's meant to be a throne that it kind of be... You can't see God, but this idea of God's going to walk with them, and so they're carrying... as his, That's their king. Uh, this image of God is with them. He brings them into the promised land. All right. And here they're walking across the Jordan River, which is all dried up. All right. So they're going to enter into the promise. And they cross this river, and God stops the river up upstream. And it's dry. So the people cross. And as soon as they the, the Ark of the Covenant stands in the middle, stays there. And then when everybody else crosses, the Ark, these the Levites here that are holding the Ark, they walk out and um, then the waters flow again. All right. So, but it's more a miracle again, just as like the Red Sea here, it's kind of another parting of waters. It's God's people are entering the promised land. All right. They get there and then there's, they get to Jericho, this big city. And God tells Joshua and the Israelites to march around the city each day. And then on the seventh day, on the Sabbath, to march around like seven times. And on the, once, once, on the seventh time around, 
the people are to make noise, uh, to cry out for the Lord, and they have trumpets, and this is what happens. The walls come tumbling down, all right? They come down, and they're able to take the city, which uh, um, defeat their, the enemies in, in the city. Um, but we see that they don't wage, they wage war liturgically with worship, all right? Which is God isn't like, well, just send a bunch of catapults, big rocks in. Nope, you're gonna you're gonna march around in a solemn procession each day, and then seven times, and then you're gonna praise the Lord, and uh, the Lord will win. So for our spiritual, how we fight spiritually is by living for the Lord, worshiping Him, uh, and praising Him with our words and our lives. All right, let's close with a prayer: in the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we thank you for sending Jesus, our Savior, that you could restore friendship with us and forgive our sins. We ask that you help us draw ever closer to you each day. Help us always remain in friendship with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>